Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you how you can fix a dollhouse bed if it breaks. So this was a bed that was given to me and it was broken and they asked if I could do anything with it. And it had a post at the bottom, just a single post that went up over here. And um, it was broken. So what I did is I added a piece of cardboard here so I have something that can glue to the little bit of wood that's on the outside over here. I mean, it's just a very thin little um, quarter inch piece of wood there. Then I added two paint stirring sticks in between to attach the cardboard to that. And then that is glued to a popsicle base on the bottom, which is also glued to that little tiny piece of wood. Okay, then I went ahead and got some coffee stirring sticks. They're about a quarter of an inch. I cut them to fit inside. All right, and that's where I'm at right now. For the post, where it was missing the one, I just went ahead and cut that off. Um, I used my 3-in-1 multi-cut tool, and I just, I didn't snip it like this. I just kind of went like this a little bit around it. And then I used my knife, and I held it on the table, and I went like that through the rest of it. Okay? I was going to show you how to do that, but I started it so it would make it quicker, and then it just kind of came off really easily. So, sorry about that. In the meantime, I took the drill bit, and I drilled out all the leftover glue that was in here and in here. All right, it's very, very messy. Yes, I know. It's disgusting messy. And then now what you want to do is get your hot glue gun. Okay, you guys. So what I'm going to do first, before I go any further with this bed, is I'm going to add some hot glue right in this little area here. So I can get that gulp off of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my bed down in there. And the reason I'm doing this instead of wood glue is because it has a very hard time adhering to this thin wood. All right, and then I'm using my level. I don't know if you can see that to make sure that I have the bed post straight. Okay, so we're going to let that cool for a second. All right, while that's cooling, I'm going to show you how I did the notch that is in here. Okay, so I took the 3-in-1 multi-cut tool. And I just kind of snipped it up about an eighth of an inch. Sometimes it'll pop off for you really easy like that. Other times it won't. Like this one's got a split in the wood, so it's going to pop off before that eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect because by the time you put the mattress on there, you're not going to see it. This is more or less just an added piece of wood. You might not even need this. I'm just trying to strengthen it a little bit to where um, it doesn't fall apart again. Now I'm just doing that to square that up. Don't mind the noise that you hear in the background. That is the people across the street taking a tree down. So it should fit right around there. Now this one's a little deep, but that's okay because the main reason we're doing this is because we want to have this glue to this wood just to give it a little bit more, you know, stability there. Okay, so now I'm, usually I like the 3-in-1 Multi um, Max Glue, but I have not seen that in about a year, so I don't know if they stopped making it or Home Depot stopped selling it, so now I'm just using the tight bond. I have one little stick that I use here. I don't know if you can see my little thing. I have it in this paper um, 
clip because I can stand it up like that and I don't have to worry about the glue getting on my surface. Alright, so you want to make sure you get some glue. You don't need a whole lot of it on this edge. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do to help make this go a little quicker for you is where I've got the gap, I'm going to actually fill that with hot glue. I know y'all are thinking, oh my gosh, this is messy looking, but that's okay, because you're not going to see any of this stuff, and if my dad was alive, he'd be like, look at all this glue, and I'm scraping off the excess in case you didn't see that. So the wood glue is going to hold it. To this, and then that hot glue's filling in that gap. Now, if you want to keep that in place until it dries, get yourself some clips and then clip it down. It should only take a minute because the hot glue is mostly holding that piece. Alright, so that's going to give that a little bit more stability up at the top there. And it's up in the corners. And then for the back, just line it with popsicle sticks. I didn't bother to cut the popsicle sticks because then they would have been too short. So just go ahead and line it up like that. And then you can always take an extra piece of the coffee stirring stick because they're almost the same thickness. And put it right there in that space if you really want to or you can leave it. doesn't matter who's ever going to see the bottom of the bed. Alright, another thing I did is I went along the edge here with some crazy glue before I went any further. And then I adhered it that way. I'm going to just go back with it again. Just because, you know, once this little tiny thing of glue is open, you can never use it again. Because it dries out and... I don't know. Maybe there's a way to seal these Dollar Tree glues. I don't know. But this one, you can't. And that's what I had. And since we're on lockdown, I can't go to the store and get any more. So I'm using what I've got. I bought it to try it. And we'll see how it holds. All right. So now once that's done, then you want to cut all of your sticks to go along the inside here. Okay. You want to start at one end and work your way up. Just gluing them. And a lot of times they have a bow in them, so, or at least they do when they've been sitting for a year. So you want to make sure you're clamping it down. And then I'm just going to line the inside. Not a lot of glue because you don't want them to warp. But just enough. That everyone gets covered. Now, I figured out that you can actually clip three of these at a time. If you push them together the way that they should be, and you use one of these, it's just wide enough to clip three. And then you can hold three down at one time. And you do need to clip these, otherwise they're going to be all wonky. Okay, continue that process all the way up. I won't bore you with me doing it because I'm sure you can see what I just did.
Okay guys, so now I've got it sitting here ready to dry. Now for this little piece here, you can either fill that in with hot glue and flatten it, or you can split a piece of your stick down to size. It's about an eighth of an inch. You want to measure one side, then measure the other, or kind of guesstimate it either way. Um, it will work. And how I do it is um, using a ruler. And then after I get it to where I want it, and I'm not worried about mine being perfect because I'm probably never going to use this bed. Um, hold it in place. Lately score. Down there. After you've scored it, you can see your line. You can go back over it. And if it wasn't such a small piece, you would just keep scoring it. And I'm taking my pliers and I'm putting it right even with my line. And I'm just kind of help giving it that bend. All right, now when you get the whole thing to where it's got a bend, fold it over and score the back of it. And then it should fit right in your gap. I might need to take a little bit. No, it looks like it'll fit. Let's just take a little bit off. Too wide, just kind of shave it. Probably should have measured it and might have made it go a little bit better, but you get the idea. And then it'll just fit right in there and then you can glue it. Right, the other way you can do it is use your three in one multi cut tool. Cut one end because it's such a small area. And then cut the other end. Again, this is a three in one multi cut tool. I don't get a sponsor or anything like that from this video. I just figured, I, I mean, this tool, I just figured I'd show it because I've been using it a lot and it works great. And that fits much nicer looking. All right, so now we're gonna let that dry. I'm also gonna take and um, add one clip, I mean, one piece of uh, wood to the back of there just because it bothers me. But if you do not have this many clips, then what you can do is you can take a paint stir and stick or something, but make sure you put, um, something that you can sand off in between it, like paper or um, wax paper is actually better than paper. And put the wax paper down on the paint side. You know, the side that's got like the shine to it, put that there. And then you can clip one here and one here and then one in the middle and then you'd only need three rather than all those. I have all these, so, you know, I think I got them at Harbor Freight uh, a couple years ago and they were really cheap. So it wasn't bad at all. And then once it's done, you can get any excess glue off before you decide the next step of painting it or whatever you're sanding it or whatever you're going to do. But there's what we have so far. All right, so now I've taken off all of those. Still got to glue that one back on the back. All right, now, this is probably overkill, but I'm going to do it anyway just because this bed has fallen apart so many times, like completely you know, um, with the standard methods. My dad put it together months back and then through moving and everything, it was just not stable. Like, it's just not much holding this together. What I feel like they should have done when they built this bed is they should have put this almost all the way through to like maybe leaving, sorry about the blurriness, maybe leaving about, um, 
uh, 32nd of the wood left and then had this way back in there and then it would have held but they didn't do that they only put it in about maybe an eighth of an inch if that so I'm gonna put a line of glue the hot glue going down in here and if you guys can hear that dinging I'm sorry that's like the alert system for the coat bed 19 It's just telling me that somebody is putting another news broadcast on. Hopefully you guys are staying safe and then you're in your house and nothing happens to anybody you know or care about. And if you're an essential worker, I pray for you every day. I am an essential worker, but thankfully I own my own business and I have the right to close it. And that's exactly what I did. As I know people need their houses cleaned and everything, I just don't feel like cleaning someone's house is a risk that I should put my girls through. You know? So, I closed temporarily for at least a month. And then I will decide, you know, if it's safe and reevaluate. All right, so now it's got a nice thick coating. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of taking my hot glue gun around and smoothing out that bumpy edge so it has a better look. And I don't know if you guys have it in your area or not, but. They actually have at the hardware store here glue guns that take wood glue for this. So if you have that option, you can use that instead of a regular glue gun. But like I said, this is probably overkill. I just, I'm tired of this bed, to be completely honest with you. It is quite annoying. We've done, well, my dad did this bed when he was sick and um, he glued it together and then I came in one day to rearrange the craft room and I picked it up and the glue just did not hold at all. He would probably be quite upset over that, but it didn't hold. All right, so now that we've done this, the headboard has come off. So we need to put this down before this hot glue gets too solid. I almost forgot about it. So let me just kind of heat that up a little bit in that corner. Hopefully this camera isn't going in and out. It's that new Samsung 20. It's a, I don't know, it's like a 20 Ultra or something. I'm not using my actual camera to record this. Alright, so now this is going here. And then it's just kind of going to go like that. And then I'm going to take this crazy glue. And I'm going to fill in that gap. So hot glue, wood glue, and crazy glue is what's going into this. And as you can see, this is almost empty and I barely even used it. It's very little in here. I think that's probably why they're like single-use crazy glues. I like the, like the Loctite though. I will tell you that. Loctite super glue is pretty good stuff. But when I went to the store, they didn't have any at that time, and I got this. So I'm going to use this up before I use the Loctite that I actually do have now. And I figured, well, you know, for a dollar, I'll try it. You got like five packs or something for a buck, and it actually doesn't do bad. Okay, so that's there. Now, if you want, you can continue this process all the way down and go back over that if you want. But I'm just basically putting this here as added support for that little piece of um headboard and i'll probably actually go back in and fill it with some um wood glue as well once that dries okay so then i put a little bit of wood glue in there it's still a little wet there just to kind of fill in that gap where the crazy glue couldn't attach it the crazy glue is just too thin all right so now we're going to leave this sit here what you need to get now is either some little wooden round um 
beads, some plastic round beads, or um, some stick pens, something like that. Because now we need to finish this edge here. And yes, I know it's a little wonky, but it was like that before we did this. Remember, this headboard was level, so that means this one probably isn't. And this one I didn't do. That or the board's warped, I don't know. So we're going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to get the stuff to make the post. Okay, you guys, so I think it's pretty strong compared to what it was. I mean, I don't want to pull on it too much, but it seems to be doing a pretty good job of holding it up now. All right, so I'm going to pick a drill bit, and when I do it, I want to make it to where I hold this behind it, and it's pretty close to the same size. Not exact, but pretty close. All right, and then what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to put it in my little drill gun, which this is just one we got when we were on vacation one time. We ended up needing it for whatever reason. I have no idea, but something happened and we needed a drill to do it. So we bought this. It was like some cheap drill. I don't even remember. It was like, I want to say like 30 bucks or something. It was really cheap for um, being a drill. And it runs off a battery. However... I have to find the charger because when my dad passed away, I have no idea what happened to the charger in the process. So when this is dead, I'm going to have to start looking. And it's getting pretty close. All right. So you want to find the center of this. You can kind of eyeball it if you want. Or you can put an X on it. And that went through pretty good. All right, now these are just stick pens, and then they're just going right down in there. Now, to help hold them in place, if you want, you can actually put some crazy glue on it. Now, obviously, this one doesn't have any in there that way, but there's still a lot left up in here. So if I just kind of dip that down in there, I'm going to get some of that. And if you can't get it, just be careful. You can always poke it through. And then your whole thing gets coated. And then you can just crazy glue it. Right in place. I'm turning this as I'm pulling it out because I don't want it to warp the wood and make the hole bigger. All right, now they're pushed all the way down. Now here's the decision you need to make because this is going to be a tough one or an easy one. I'm going to paint this bed white. Or at least I'm thinking it's going to be white. I don't know. Um, because I don't want to see all of this excess stuff. And because I'm trying to make it look like it's uniform to the way that it was originally, but without that tall post that we were talking about that was at the bottom, to see it would have had four posts like that. And since we don't have that, it kind of looks funny. So you can't really have um, pink as your post, and you can't stain this, so it has to be painted. Do you want to cut this off right here? And put another one, and this kind of feels like it's wonky. This feels like it might be breaking there. Do you see that? How it's kind of, this is a very cheaply made bed. If they still sell this 20 years later, you might want to take and check it out before you buy it. Um, but anyway, uh, you can cut this off here, and then that way they're both uniform posts, which is what I'm going to do. And how I'm going to do that is the same way that I did the bottom post. I'm going to go right here, just where the ball is, just slightly going around it very carefully. 
Now, obviously, you can go all the way through, but I don't want to. Especially now that I see this post is kind of even worse off than the bottom of the bed. This one must have been played with by a kid or something. I don't know. It's definitely needing TLC. Okay, so. Now, you can take your time and cut that off, but I'm just going to do it this way. My blade's getting dull. much cleaner cut when I see how let's show you the difference a dull blade on this side left ridges see how it left the ridges and then that went flat so I'm gonna have to break that off and put a new blade on it and do it where I can thin it out So now we want to do the same thing we did with that, drill it, and then put the post in. All right, so that's what it's going to look like right there. You'll have the post, and all the posts will be even. Now that I've done that, you see how you have a little bit of excess glue over here? I'm going to go ahead and cut that off of the outside because I don't want that to show on my final paint job. Be very careful not to cut yourself, you know, when you do that, especially if you just change your knife. Keep in mind that it's going to be a new knife or a new blade, and it's going to be very, very sharp. All right, so this is basically all that you have to do for this bed, except for now you need a mattress. All right, and if you want to know a no sew hack for a mattress and a couple things that you can use for a mattress, um, I'll show you that. But if you're going to paint your bed, I would suggest you take like a 400 grit sandpaper, lightly sand it, and then um, give it a quick paint. Okay, so for the mattress, you have a couple options. You can use a thin piece of foam. You can get an old yoga mat. You know, or you can um, just do some cardboard around some material. All right, so I'm gonna show you a quick no sew mattress. This is just a piece of um, bandana. It's white material basically. All right, so what you need to do is clear out your workspace so you have a place to work. All right, let's cut a piece of cardboard and a piece of your foam or whatever you plan on using for your mattress. Okay, you want to have the white side facing down. You want to cut this out like this, 
All right, once it's cut out, go ahead and cut to the corner. These scissors are kind of dull. Okay, and then once you've done that, then cut the corner completely out so you have a square. Do that for all four. Okay, so once you have all four squares cut, then you want to go ahead, do a thin coat of hot glue. Pull it nice and snug. You want to do the top and bottom first. Pull it nice and snug again. Okay. You do not want to see any material overhanging right there. So if you see that, you need to trim that off. Okay, so now you want to go ahead. Make sure you get the end. And then you want to fold that over. Okay, so you should have a little square that looks like this. Now, if you're going to glue your mattress down, you don't even need to do this part. You can just do this next part. All right. You want to cut your material to fit your mattress. This one you're going to do a little bit different. Fold it up on its side and then press it down. And the reason I did it like that is that way I get it nice and flat and I'm not pulling it to where it's like kind of wonky. All right, and you'll make sure it's still taut at that end. And when you do, fold it up, fold it down. And then that gives you a nice square side. Okay, now for this next part, you're going to have to fold in this part here, which means when you fold it up, you're going to have a seam that's going to come up. And you're going to cut that at an angle. Okay. Tuck those corners in like you're folding a box. And then just pinch them. The purpose in pinching them is that you still get your sharp edge. Any little bit of material that might have stuck up, just kind of put a little bit of glue on that to kind of tack it. All right, at this point,
put glue along that side edge there, our top edge. And then you're going to fold it down the same way we did the sides, just having it straight so it's nice and crisp. All right. Now, at this point, I'm going to fold that over. Now, I'm using my scissors because they're cold and they'll cool it quicker and I don't have to use my finger okay once it cools down then it'll pop right off it won't stick to it because it's metal or titanium with these scissors all right now you're going to do the same exact thing to this side okay so at this point you can either glue this to the back of that so you have a finished edge okay and then you can take your mattress on and off or you can glue your mattress directly to your bed I'm gonna choose to glue it to my bed but I'm gonna paint this bed first okay now if you want to have the little buttons that mattresses have you can do that Get yourself some um, string and a needle that it'll go through. I'm using the thicker string because I just think that it'll be easier to do it without having to use lots and lots of material. Okay, and you want to measure your mattress. All right, and then you kind of want to go over just a little bit. And then you want to mark where you want your mattresses is, so where you want your dots. So I'm going to have mine come in at one inch from each corner. Then I'm going to go down every inch. I'm going to measure the bottom first. This ruler's old. Got to find one with lines. Hold on. Okay, now I've got an actual ruler with lines on it. inch over And now you want to sit here and go right down the middle the same way. Okay, so I've double did my um, string, double looped it. Now I'm going to start at one corner and I'm going to go through. going to be hard to find your hole because you're going from the back but once you find it you want to bring your string all the way through all right you want to put a little knot in your string pulling it downward just like that go back through I'm hitting the glue, the hot glue. And then there you have one button to your mattress. Now you can tie it off and do each one individually, but since it's easier to do it this way, this is what I choose to do. 
do one loop and this is embroidery string by the way like the floss that you get when you do cross stitching and stuff like that do that with all of them all right so this is what it looks like so far now what I'm going to do, because I don't want this coming undone and I still have to finish, is I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of this just to kind of hold this string in place. And then that way it won't come unraveled. And I'm going to do the same to the top. Okay, so once you've done all of the ones you measured, go directly in the middle of each one and do it again. All right. Tie your knot the same exact way. By this point, you should have it already down to a science with all the knots. And then just go through. All right, so that's what the mattress would look like when it's finished. Again, you can finish off the back side with your material, and this is a no-sew mattress. If you want to make this a little smaller so you don't see it on the inside, you can do that as well, but just keeping it the same size kind of gives it the appearance of a box spring when you put it on the mattress, or well, when you put it on the bed. Alright, I'm going to paint this and I'll be back. Okay, so now once it's painted, you can give it extra coats if you want. I decided to just give it one coat. Um, you've got your little post here. If you can see they're even and they're the same size as the bottom. Now, I only gave the back side one coat because it's under the bottom and you're not going to see it. I may go over this leg and over here a little bit more though. But in the meantime, you have the two options like I was telling you before with the mattress. You can glue your mattress to this cardboard that we did and then glue that down or just set it down. It's up to you. And it kind of gives you the illusion that it's a box spring there. Or you can just glue your mattress like that and then you've got a mattress attached. All right, I'm gonna glue mine just like this because I like how it fits in here a little bit better. So in order to do this, I'm just gonna do a little row of hot glue. Careful not to get my fingers because I'm pretty good at getting my fingers with hot glue. All right. And then I'm going to center it and just press it down. That's it. Now the broken bed that you've seen in the beginning is now a working bed. And it's pretty stable. I mean, I'm putting a good amount of pressure on that. Now, my dad probably would have said that's way too much glue, Laurie. But after trying to do it the other way, I just think it needs a lot more support. And, you know, if I had a piece of wood that was one single thickness of a quarter inch that would have fit, I would have used that and I would have not done all these steps. But because I didn't, I went ahead and kept the existing frame. And a lot of people don't have the ability to... Um, cut big, you know, thick wood. So that's a quick, easy way you can do it with popsicle sticks.
and coffee stirring sticks and paint sticks. All right. Like I said, this bed was given to me, um, I don't even remember who. It might have came with a dollhouse that I got from maybe Heather, I'm not sure. But um, it was all broken up and busted. And I just figured, eh, why throw it away? We can use it. All right, so this bedspread I made for a bigger bed. But if you let it hang down, it actually will work by going all the way to the floor. As you can see, the pillows <laughs> are a little bit too much because I made it for the larger um, canopy bed. Okay, and here's another bed set that I made. And then I have a balance as well to go with it for your window. Alright guys, well thanks for watching and um, I look forward to making more videos and tutorials. Eventually I'll get to that farmhouse dollhouse that my dad and I were building and um, right now I'm just looking for some inspiration for it. At this point, this is where we got and um, I know how the outside's going to go but as far as the inside goes, I kind of was doing this until like 5.30 this morning just trying to decide if I want to make a toy store out of it or what I want to do. Um, kind of just throwing that in there to see what it looked like to see if I'd like it to be that way before I finish the walls and everything. If I do it as a toy store, I'm going to just do the little pillars here as opposed to the room additions. You know, where it's the... We're not additions, but the separations. So instead of that, I'm not sure. So tell me your thoughts on the bed and tell me if you think this works for this dollhouse. It's obviously a mess and it needs to be finished. But I'm thinking some store signs, some um, more shelves maybe. I'm not really sure. The idea I was going with up here with the plastic stuff was like the little tyke stuff. And so as this is not scale for an actual um, 112th doll to sit on, it would be a scale for a child of a 112th doll that would sit down and play at the play table. So this is kind of where I'm at. Give me an idea if you have one in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And I will see you next time. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and we've got lots more to go. We still have that Beacon Hill up there that was given to me that it's going to get renovated. I have a couple more in storage. The 50s diner, I've got to put the sign up, kind of got sidetracked there, and then this farmhouse over here, we still have to go ahead and do the interior on that one. I have this kit, and then I've got that one. I still have the playground to go through. I've got so, so much to do, and I've got very little space now that my dad's passed away um, because I don't have his workshop anymore. So we're working on trying to get this room straight and then going from there. Um, eventually, I'll finish the movie theater seats as well, if you haven't seen that. There is a tutorial on that in the YouTube channel as well. It's kind of a mess in there, but and there's Dad building the secretary desk. So anyway, like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this video and lots more to come. Check out my website as well for free templates and tutorials and lots of printables. Like this is one here for the 50s diner. It's a sign, you know, that you hang on the outside of your diner. The sign that gets hung up on the roof, which ends up being up here. It was up there, but it broke when we moved it. But, um, you know, things like that. It's all on there. It's free to download dollhousetutorials.com. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.